Cheers. All right. Hello. Yes. yes. <laughs> um, welcome back. Yes, welcome. I feel like it's been a little while. It's been a long time. Look, things have happened. What's happened, Sarah? Oh, mainly I've just finished my exams and yeah. I'm living my best post exam life. Just no big deal. She's finished her exams. She's got a million more projects done than I have. I am very, very jealous. I can't wait to be where you are. I just feel like this massive weight has come off my shoulders. Life is good. Uh, the sun is shining and I've not got a care in the world and boy, it feels good. You know? I'm very, I'm envious. Sorry, salt in the wound. No, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> I'm actually, you know, I really, I really appreciate this normality of Sarah also being out of exams because it just makes me, makes me, you know, have a better excuse to knit and not distract and like not worry about distracting yeah, me, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. I was a bit of a grunt the last few weeks as well. Yeah. I think fair. I was just like, anyway. Fair. Um... But we are here on the lands of the Wurundjeri people, the Kulin Nation. Um, it's a lovely day and it's lovely to be here. And we are drinking Monk's Chai. As always. We're going to take a really long time. I bought the one kilo bag, so we're going to be <laughs> drinking Monk's Chai for a while. We're drinking it out of more of my pottery. This is my favourite glaze ever. I'll just show you up close. It's got like a million colours in it. But um, my pottery studio doesn't use this glaze anymore because it runs like nothing else and ruins all the shelves. So mm. I like the green, like it's got, I like this green and it's just lovely. It's got like green and little coppery bits in it and stuff. It's quite nice. It's beautiful. Anyway, I tried to make lots of little tea cups, um, the same size that look the same, make a little set, alas. Some are still bigger than others. Sarah's is slightly bigger, but... That's okay. I'm slightly bigger. <laughs> it's all proportional. <laughs> I guess, um, you know, <clears throat> it's hard to get handmade things completely That's replicated. Charm. So. That's a bit of charm. Anyway, I like them. So you can enjoy this chai with us. It's a funny sort of day here. So apologies in advance if it kind of gets a bit bright and dark or if the wind rattles the windows, which sounds a bit like end of days i don't know oh actually i have news which i haven't told you yet this if there's a potential that this might be the last time we film in this setting oh no of course so unfortunately my landlord has decided to sell the property we're renting here well, not sarah but i'm renting here with some housemates and i love this space i've lived here um in this, this particular so place in melbourne for the last now like four years since lockdown when I moved here um, and I've really grown to love it and I love all the cafes and stuff here and now we have to find a new place and we're a little bit nervous about it not gonna lie but a lot of the places are still quite nice or just I mean to be fair when we moved in here I wasn't like the biggest fan so but it's grown on. Oh my it's, gosh. when I say it's grown on me like I can't imagine anything better than this place I remember walking so down nice. the street not all that long ago thinking my life is perfect right now. I'm living my perfect job. I've got the perfect housemates. I've got the perfect house. And then like the next day. Psych. Like, yeah, yeah, pretty much. So hopefully that'll just happen in the next place. We won't be moving far. It'll just be like the same Quite suburb fine. or the next one over. So probably yeah. just don't have wall floor to ceiling windows. No. So hopefully the lighting's is good, but we'll work around it. Never mind. Yeah. Um, anyway, what should we do? Let's talk about what we're wearing. Mm, yes. Yeah, so... I am wearing the, I'm sure everyone and their dog has seen this pattern before. It's the petite knit Sunday sweater. Um, I will show you sort of like the length of it. It is a very chunky sweater. I also have the mohair version, which I've worn on the podcast before. Oh, yeah, yeah, that blue one? Yes. Mm. The mohair one is more lightweight. It's like an eight ply kind of situation. I think you're meant to do it holding two... Like or a four three. Ply. Yeah, like yeah, a yeah, few yeah. strands of lace mohair. Um, but I went with like an eight ply Rowan. I think it's the Kid Silk Haze. No, not Kid Silk Haze. Kid Classic. Kid Classic, that's right. So it's like quite a fuzzy yarn and it's really lightweight. And I, I wear that one to death and the drape is beautiful. Um, this one, I guess, it was the second sweater I ever made. The first one was also a Sunday sweater, but it was less oversized it was too small for me and then I realized I was a really tight knitter <laughs> so after that sweater this sweater and every sweater afterwards with the sun uh, with um the petite knit sweaters I've always knitted half a needle size greater mm -hmm. um this is actually a size medium as well because I wanted it really oversized 
as you can probably tell. I think um, it, it looks, I think it's the right size for you, like it suits you. I think that it's looks, a, the style I wanted yeah, yeah, from yeah, this yeah. sweater, which I didn't really get from the first time I made it. I guess the other thing I wanted to sort of point out is the peeling on this is horrific. <laughs> like I'm embarrassed to wear this out sometimes because look at that. I don't know if you can like, oh, there we go. You can yeah. really see it so bad. I feel like when I got here, you were like, this is my shag pile jumper. And I was it like, is. yeah, that's the vibe. It is, but I'm just, I've just decided just to embrace it, just it and lean into it. Um, it's so soft, it's so warm and cozy and comfy and it has a special place in my heart from the fact that like I own, like it's one of the first things I ever made. Mm. Um, I guess in terms of the lesson, I will never use this yarn what again. Is it? it is not cheap. It is. <laughs> it's even worse. <laughs> I know. It was from Morrison's Sons, mm. which I love as a store, but it's the Menos del oh, Uruguay right. yarn. And That's nice. It's expensive. I think yeah. it was like $35 or $40 a ball, like For a skein. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think I used like five. Yeah. And then I also held it together with Rowan Kid Silk Haze because this is back in the day when I didn't, didn't know how to find more affordable yarns and like how to play with mm -hmm. things a little bit to make something quality that also wasn't a million dollars. I would just walk straight into the store and be like, I like that color. I like that color. Go. Yeah. I didn't really look. It's, it's all part it. of the learning process. Exactly. I have to say though, I love the variegation. I love it. It's very it. beautiful. And I love the color and I love the chunkiness. It's literally just the pilling, and it's not. I actually think it's beyond pilling. I think it's felting, because I tried doing the whole shaper. Same. Yeah. It, it doesn't it. doesn't do anything. That's sad. So we just live with it now. It's the but look. That's okay. It's the look. Um, I am. My, this is my, what am I wearing is also my first finished object. <laughs> um, and I was like, hey, we should catch up so we can talk about our knits mainly so I can talk about this. Like, this is just all a thinly veiled excuse for me <laughs> to show this off because I am so happy. But I finally finished my Ingrid sweater, my love petite it. knit. Love it. Um, I love it. I'm so glad we got there in the end. There were, there were tears. I don't know if there were actual tears. There was a lot of emotion Look, involved. It was... I realized like when I, I looked at my Ravelry about when I officially started the project for the first time, when I uh, was making the medium size and it was like February and I cast it off in like June. So it's been a long time. And yes, I did pull the entire thing out and start again, but this has been on the needles in some form or another for so long. And it hasn't been one that you've just like hibernated on the needles either. Like I feel like no, it's one you've been like like acting on yeah yeah slowly slowly and to be fair it's between exams and stuff yeah. so like there's been other things going on but it's done it is everything i could ever want <laughs> it's gorgeous the color the shape it's yes the level of fluff yes it's perfect i have spoken before about my opinions on the sizing yes um because actually i wrote this down like a good like i did my homework so I did the size 9 to 10 year olds, yep, that's right, 9 to 10 year olds, um, which is like, so I had to buy the junior pattern. Um, oh gosh. No. So I ended up doing a bit of a combination, so this, this, the stitch count is for the 9 to 10 year old size, but I kind of did more of the shaping and the, the patterning as per the adult pattern, because they're slightly different. Um, the differences that that resulted in meant that I had to add an additional panel. So because my drop shoulder wasn't down at my elbow like it was before, <laughs> it meant that the sleeve was shorter, which meant I had to just add another pattern repeat to the sleeve. Does oh, that make sense? Yeah. Like it was meant, you're meant to finish it after the, you meant to finish it after this one, yeah, but yeah. I had to add a whole other thing That's to compensate right. for the fact that the armhole wasn't down at my elbow. But I actually kind of like it because it means that the the things are even. Yeah, it which matches up. It was a total coincidence. That's really cool. And it's just like, mm, it's so satisfying. Yeah, it's so satisfying. <laughs> it's perfect as well. In, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, so I ran out of yarn. I don't know if you can tell. Oh, like, very slightly. I was like, I'm not going to buy a whole nother skein, but like, that's literally the last of the main. That's so satisfying. Uh, it's pattern. actually incredibly satisfying. <laughs> I feel like you enjoy that. I'm going to look also, at this and be this. 
Can I just say, I could justify this so well. I have one that's the same. Yes. Like where one was a bit longer. You probably remember it. It's like cardigan that I still haven't fixed. Oh. Don't talk about it. Um, you wear your watch on this hand. So like kind of like oh, it's it's satisfying to have a little bit. If only, <laughs> if only I wore a watch. Oh, okay. So yeah. Um, so this is using Great Ocean Road Woolen Mill 8 Ply, which mm -hmm. is a, it's about 80% wool, 20% alpaca spun in really locally. Um, big fan with the Isaya mohair. It's so soft. I keep just, mm, it's so good. Um, the only, okay, so the one I'm just thing, laughing because Sarah walked in and she's like, feel my arm. <laughs> she's like, feel I'm doing it to everyone. they like, see this? It's very expensive and it took me forever and I love it. Um, the only thing I would do differently, yes. if I had my time again, the collar on the adult pattern has like two sections, yes. which I don't care. No, we about. hate it. I'm not into it. So I was like, no, I'll just do a fold around button band. But as a but it kind of it was it's a very deep neck hole to to in anticipation of doing that double. Yeah, sure. And so as a result, it sits quite a lot lower than I would probably. Yeah, yeah. And so I end up kind of hoiking it back a little bit, and it's probably a bit wider than I would like. Yeah. But in the scheme of things, I don't care. Options for that: one, pick up less stitches. You could do that. Yeah. Or, I don't know if you've seen the one that Anthea's done. So Anthea, one of our mm -hmm. good mates, she also didn't like the double thing. Mm -hmm. She ended up kind of just doing like a roll of eyelets yeah. and stuff and then doing a button band. But I think what she used was less chunky, like of a yarn. Like it was a very fine yarn. I think like a fine ink white was a bellissimo. Yeah, yeah. So. I just think yeah. like the way I, what, what I probably could have done is just do less of a deep shape on the neck, but like. That sounds complicated. Well, I mean, I, I tweak this pattern so much to, oh, to, to merge me. those patterns anyway that it doesn't... Okay. Anyway, if I was going to make it again, which I can't see a world in which I would do that. <laughs> She's like, I'm done I'm with done. this. I love it, but I'm done. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's really lovely and warm. I have measured it. It's giving me 16 centimetres of positive ease. And I'm pretty happy with this. Like, it looks great. I think this is just the right amount of baggy yeah. that I wanted. And not what the medium was going to give me. It is the perfect amount of baggy. Yeah, it's good. But yeah, um, it was a bit of a complicated one, but that was because of like what Tweaking. I chose to do. Otherwise, it knits up really, like it's got that like paciness and moorishness of like changing things and it's really warm. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm gonna wear, I want to wear it to Bingo. Yeah, good, good call, good call. I like that. But this is my Ingrid sweater. Very nice. I'm so impressed. I'm glad I actually finally got there, guys. So have come on that we've all gone on this journey yeah. together. Yeah. Um, but yeah, what a time. What's next? Do you want to do your next one? Look, I feel like I'm gonna You get we're gonna have to we, we can't do the whole alternate thing this time because Sarah is far ahead. Because I have so much more time on my hands now. No, no, no. Um, I want to show you my other really exciting thing. Oh my gosh, is... I'm dying to see this because I saw your pics that you said. Oh my, it's. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> my heart just stopped for a sec. I'm sorry. The neatness of that. Oh, no, okay. It, it looks fake, guys. I think she might have just bought it. From so the I did my first ever test knit. Um, I saw photographs of. Um, Veronica from Kutava Kika on Instagram wearing the Sailor Swift. It's called the Sailor Swift tank. It's a cute name, by and the way. And I, I saw it name. and I was like, it's the middle, like it's the depths of winter here, but I want a summer cotton tank because that's what everyone else is doing and I just had fun with it. So I applied, to do, I applied to do the test knit and got picked, which I was like super excited about. Oh my God, and huge. I got like, huge. nervous because <laughs> I've never done a test knit before. That's so exciting. And then I got really stressed by it. Like just, oh, I always get worried about deadline, like, yeah, for me it's so. a deadline that stresses me out. And I mean like it's timing, but it was a, yeah. Anyway, <gasps> this is my, it looks so good. This is my Sailor Swift tank. Oh my gosh, I'm getting this pattern when it's released. This is incredible. Um, so. And the neatness, the, the finish, like, I'm sorry. You have to show like the up close of the stitch definition on this. Well, this like, is, I suppose, the satisfying fine thing about cotton is that like, it just looks nice. But uh, it's, it's, um, edges. actually it does look quite nice. It, it's ridiculous, guys. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. <laughs> That's not enough. I'll do it. She's not doing it right. I'm sorry. 
Look at like the stitch definition on that. And look at the edges on that. Okay, so, cool. Now I'm a bit more satisfied, satisfied. with that share. Thanks. <laughs> um, so this is uh, a four ply pattern or like a fingering weight cotton top pattern. It's got quite a sharp uh, armhole cut in and um, you're meant to knit it with 10 centimeters of negative ease. And I was a bit like, are you sure? I mean, I was like, I'm just gonna do what you tell me to do. Like I will follow the size appropriate to give me 10 centimeters of negative ease. And it does, it gives me, it's tight, it's snug. It's like very fitted. Oh, that's not what I was anticipating. I know, I was I know. anticipating like a... Like loose, casual. No, and no, no. Sailor Swift. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, sure. Yeah, um, it's not. It's very uh, tight to the body. I think if I was gonna make it again, I'd probably make a size up, like just for a different look and a different fit. But this one is like snug all the way down. Interesting. There is no shaping around, like after the bust, mm. which is fine, except for if you have like a more pronounced bust to say waist ratio, like. If there's a big discrepancy, you might think about grading between sizes, perhaps, depending on how like snug you want it or how loose you want it. But it's just straight, so yeah. Um, Ten centimeters of negative ease. I was like, I don't know, lady, but she knows what she's doing. She's a clever. She makes incredible patterns. I really love her stuff. And this one's a really fun one. You knit up really quick. Um, it's got that stripey satisfaction. The satisfaction of the stripes. Oh, I'm sorry. The inside satisfaction, like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're chuffed. You're chuffed. I actually do love like the inside. The inside. Well. It's actually really cool. But also like the satisfaction of the shaping here with the stripes is also very neat. So yeah, I might take this on holiday with me. I I feel like I should take a photograph for like the pattern release. Yes. But it's just too cold to wear. <laughs> oh yeah, we are like, in the depths. Of I don't want to really expose this much of my skin for a prolonged period, so I might have to wait till I'm in a warm climate before I take a photograph. Oh my gosh, guys, I'm so sorry. You will not miss this when I'm in my new place. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, but yeah, it's my first experience of a test knit, which was kind of fun. How exciting! It was kind of fun. Like everyone was like chatting and sharing pictures. Oh, and... I love that. So yeah. Um, thank you for picking me. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for including me. Thanks for including me. I had a great time. Um, but yes, that's my second finished object. What do you got to? Show me something of yours. I think I've talked enough. Oh, okay. So I don't have a finished, I don't have any finished objects. I just have a work in progress, but it's really close and I tried to, but alas, no, no, no. here we are. So you guys will remember this. This is the, um, V-neck. It's just like the plain v-neck vest that Petite Knit does. We've talked about it previously. Um, and I'm loving it. I'm so obsessed with it. It's almost done, guys. I'm so close. Are you impressed? Because I have been doing all the bind offs and as picking up stitches as I go, which I usually hate doing, but I've been doing okay. it. And the last bit that I have left now is just the neck, the v-neck itself. It looks so, um, it's so light. Like it feels it like the perfect slip over. It is. The thing you just slip it over whatever you're wearing, which is obviously the function of it, but like. Um, I it's love it. So it's so nice. It's soft. I actually tried it on yesterday and um, just as is. The fit is perfect. perfect. Of course it is. Um, the only Look thing. Look this beautiful bind off. It's sort of taken me so long. I just like decided. I don't know what's happening okay, in the house. I've just decided. <laughs> <laughs> Good. I've just decided to start embracing all the, even the less fun parts of a pattern, including doing a really long bind off with a darning needle in yeah. front of the TV. But you know, it looks good. It looks great. Um, it is just it's so a, light and lofty. A reminder: the Izia silk mohair and the knitting for olive merino. Yeah. Yep. The Izia, I think, is very much carrying the softness here. Obsessed with the Izzy Mohair. Yeah, I don't I think, think I'm gonna get anything to. else now. Like, if it's if there's, there's a colour in Izzy, I'm gonna make it. If there's not a colour in Izzy, I will change the pattern <laughs> to make it work. <laughs> I don't I know do. if I have that level of commitment. No, but like, I guess all of the colours that I like are the ones that they make as well. Like, less yeah. brights and pastel. Yeah, true. The only um, thing that I'm, and this is very much a me problem, I think, the only concern I have is see at the underarms how it kind of flares out. Mm. 
that's like actually less attractive when you wear it. But do you see that or wouldn't the fact that your arm is here dip putting down the pressure on it? It would literally only be if your arm was above your shoulder that you yeah, would notice that. I feel like I still notice it though. I guess I'm wondering what I might do is like once I've blocked it and everything, I've I'm considering putting like a thing of elastic yeah, in there to, to kind of hold it, hold the bottom bit up. Because you can't tell from the top because it's just resting on your shoulder. Mm. But just for just like that little, like I don't like the little point. Mm. You can't really see because it's dark. But yeah, it's got this little point. Here's something wiped. <laughs> something. It's not. Very pale. It's not super bothersome, but it's just think something I'm thinking of. Would it be like if okay in a in a world where. In, with the benefit of hindsight, would it be just picking up less stitches? Do you think that would make that go away? Yeah, but interestingly, I made the, like, the size on this is also quite funny, actually. Because I started off making a small, and then when I was making a small, and I just had, like, the very, very top bit done, I panicked and was like, this is tiny looking. <laughs> so then I decided when I got up to, like, here, I'm actually going to make a medium, which just meant that the cast on bit was a little bit no. smaller. And then I made a medium, 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 but I decided when it came to the armholes and everything else, I was going to do finishings as a small. So I've actually picked up mm, less, less stitches than, anyway, you but whatever. I think, it, I think it's fine. Also, it might be one of those things that like when I block it, like everything gets bigger and proportionally this doesn't, yeah. and then it's just fine. Um, I'm being very, very fussy. Also, can we just talk about <laughs> these little stitch markers, which I wasn't planning on talking about these, but they're so cute. And they're my favorite, like one of my favorite yeah. stitch markers in the world. They're the twill and print um, stitch markers. And they're extremely bougie because they're actually gold plated. <laughs> what? Yeah, did you not know this? No. They're actually gold plated. And they do these um, row counters and stuff as well, which I have them. I just don't have them with me right now, which are so, so cute. Like they're the cutest. They're really sturdy. They're actually like quite practical, like because of their sturdiness mm. and how they, they kind of act like a stitch marker. Like they're on the project mm. themselves and i'll show you a close-up so this one is a little sheep and it's really cute and super shiny and then i've also got a little bee in here too this one i think is actually technically called a, a progress marker Pro progress keeper yeah that's right but i still use them as like a functional stitch marker. Anyway, so that's my project. Cute. It'll be a finished object, I'm sure, by the time that... You can wear it mantle. Yeah, exactly. Nice. What do you have next? <clears throat> um, my other finished objects are kind of perhaps less exciting or a bit less groundbreaking. Um, I have made my penny gloves, which are going to be part of my penny Sophie combo that I started in the last video. Um, what a great colour. Look at us. They were a great colour. <laughs> um, in our petite knit neutrals. Um, so, so. so these are using Kremke Soul Wool Alpaca and Isaiah Mohair, um, which is a fair bit chunkier than the yarn that is used in the pattern. But I've made quite a few pairs now using an eight ply with a mohair rather than a four ply with a mohair and I've just adjusted the number of stitches accordingly so I'm essentially just using the pattern for the design features like the way that the thumb increases run and the um, cast off like edges and stuff I did a Icelandic bind off which oh. I think looks really cute uh -huh. it's, it's apparently it's a type it's a good type of bind off when you're doing garter stitch yeah and so essentially because this is a garter stitch edge at the top I use Icelandic bind off and it's a really quick, easy bind off and it's got good stretch and it suits garter stitch. Yeah, gorgeous. So that's my hot tip for you making penny gloves. Yeah, totally. I like it. I'm, gonna, I'm definitely going to try those on, by the way, while you talk about anything. <clears throat> and my last one is not super exciting. It's just Ooh. one that I... Look where it's at. Yeah. Sorry. No, no. Carry on. It's distracted. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is just a baby blanket. I've shown this pattern before on another baby blanket, but I have made another one for my boss at work is um, to have a little boy so Aww. I made a little um, it's like a little pram size blanket that's very cute perfect swaddle blankie as well think, yeah. yeah maybe for newborns but not much else yeah for the first few months 100% true trust me I would know <laughs> I swaddle many a baby <laughs> on my day-to-day -day basis at work <laughs> I was always so bad at the swaddling I love I, it baby I, burrito just 
Um, I would always try and do it after I'd seen them and then the midwives would be like, just let them start again because I've done such a terrible job of it. And they do, they do it so tight and so like... Yeah, they do it so I love well. it. And like I like to put their arm in and then oh. wrap it and then put their other arm in. <laughs> And then I'm like, I want someone to do that to me. And I just, I love, I don't know how we got, well, I don't know how we got, yeah, but I love the whole process of doing it. And then when you like perfect it in the end and the baby's just so <laughs> it's just, just this happy little like, <laughs> yeah. they're happy. When you pass it to the, it, pass the child to the parent and they're just like the little parcel. This little parcel of wrapped up stripey goodness. And they're all happy. Perfect for that. <laughs> so anyway, this is called the, uh, it's called the stripey baby travel rug or maybe just stripy travel rug. Um, it is using a DK yarn, four colors, garter stitch stripes, smashes, like it just, it goes super, super quick. And it is my go-to when I am making baby presents because it's a good size. Everyone says it's a good um, pram size. Like it fits well in a pram. You know what's funny? I feel like, I mean, I don't have children of my own, but I always would look at these and be like, oh, it's such a small blank. Like, what are you, like, what are baby blankets even for? Like, do you need them? They're actually so useful. I see like, people holding on to them forever. They're just kind of like, like they're always I, just the being ideal. Wrapped. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Especially in the hospital and stuff. Yeah, like, yeah. Like, say they have like, like a drip or something in and like, like when you can't just rug them up in clothes for whatever reason. So, they're so handy that size. Yeah, I see like when new mums come to see me and they bring their for like six week baby checks and stuff, there's always like three or four different blankets in the pram yeah. and it's just kind of like so they can mix and match depending on temperature. And, and, it's good. and then they'll like have a little spew on one. Yeah, yeah you know, he needs best. But then you kind of take one out as you're examining it and stuff. So, yeah. Um, this is a great pattern I'm so happy with. It. I, I think it's only in this old book that I don't, I don't know where you get it anymore, but it's a kind of slightly rectangular garter stitch stripe oh. can with me. you know what i'm looking at this i have no babies in my life i want more friends with babies specifically <laughs> to be able to knit this for them yeah so it's it looks really like nice. it would be a fun knit yeah and i've done this in the um sublime baby cash merino silky cash merino so it's machine washable but really squishy and soft and the garter stitch makes it squishy as well yeah nice so yeah that's for my supervisor at work um, Good and I think that's all. They're all my finished objects. I'm very impressed. Sarah has been busy. Right, I'm just a lady of leisure now. Oh, I'm so jealous. All I want is to do that right now, but alas. Um, should we move on to some whip? Fun. Oh yeah. I, I mean, I talked about my whip. So. Wow, this is just the Sarah show whip. today. I mean, it's fine. I don't. I'm, I'm into it. I've just got one. It's it's barely a whip because I've just finished my sailor swift top. But um, I have cast on um, some socks. The sock redemption after my earlier start. Is this? Yes, it is. Ah, this is exciting. Do you guys rem remember? This is the yarn that we got from which market was She's that? crafty. She's crafty market. I remember the color being gorgeous and all the little bits of bronze. In yeah. It. So this is from Al of Athena Fiber Arts. It's their sock base, but it's got um, like sparkling. Like What's little, it called? It's like Lurex. But it's Lurex, like, yeah. It's Stellina. I don't know what that means. It's got bronze Stellina in it. It's gorgeous. Um, it's Sparkle. a good colour. It's not really the sort of thing I would normally buy. Yes, and we said that back then, but this is like but really cute. I was like, maybe, you know, socks is the, probably the one opportunity where even boring people like me can have a bit of fun. <laughs> this is barely a whip, so. But I wanted to talk about it. It's exciting still. So I've just cast on... I don't know if you'll be able to fully appreciate the prettiness of this. It's not super, yeah, I mean, it's quite variegated, but it's fun. It's variegated, but there isn't a heap of contrast between like, the different colors yes, in it. So you don't get that like really, really, really liney look, which I'm yeah, not really into, so I'm not but into. I, think, I think that looks really cool. But I like this a lot. I am making, they're called the Simple Garter Ridge Socks. And they are by a lady who, I think her name is Belinda. She is like, she was one of the first people who subscribed and she's from Melbourne and she makes oh. sock patterns. Oh, and that's so lovely. on Instagram, her name is Here I Knit. She's just like a sock making machine and she's just released a pattern for a free pair of socks. So I thought I'd try her socks. Oh, I definitely want to check that out. I've actually been um, wanting to make more socks recently, but I also feel guilty about casting on more and more and more projects. But oh, wow. it's winter here and it's like... It's sock season. Yeah, it's like a real excuse. I, I love wearing little boots that like the socks poke out okay. of. Yes. Um, 
and I've only got one pair of knitted socks and they're huge on me so I don't usually wear them out and I just want more to well this one is a good one I think because it's not like a complete vanilla sock but it's so that you can kind of but it's very very simple it's just got this garter ridges down like vertical garter ridges and it just it allows the yarn to sing you've convinced me i'm casting on socks today <laughs> well, no yeah, truly good. didn't take long anyway but... i should show you the pattern because it's it's nice yeah. and simple but i uh, anyway thanks but Linda. here i knit um we also go for the same booty tea <laughs> oh god all right um because she posts a lot because she takes her knitting to um the football I mean, I take my knitting to the couch when my boyfriend's watching the football, so that's like basically the same. Basically, basically. <laughs> um, okay, that was my only whip. So, I'm so excited to talk about this. So, um, next weekend, well, I don't know when this will go up actually, but from the time of filming, next weekend is the Bendigo Wool and Sheep Show. Um, and last year when we went, we've talked about in previous videos, we had an absolute ball. I went on such a whim for this day trip with Sarah. Um, it was very spontaneous and it ended up being one of the best things I've ever done in my entire life. Um, and we're doing it again next week and I'm really excited. So we thought we, we had a bit of a discussion before about a game plan and like the things that we actually want to go and basically we're not just going free for all. We're going to try and like have a bit of strategy and talked about what patterns we've been looking at and we thought we'd share with you guys what we're thinking of picking up in anticipation of those knitting those patterns up yeah i think to our folly or certainly to my folly the last kind of yarn event that we went to i did not buy in a targeted manner i yeah. was just like that's nice and just bought something so this time got a game plan there's a few particular patterns that we're both specifically shopping for and I think hopefully this works out I mean I think there's definitely scope to be inspired when we get there 100% um and like maybe some fun sock yarns will end up coming back as well but I think having a little bit more of a clear plan about what we want to buy is and also yeah. like to you know our credit that was not the plan when we got there i think both of us just didn't realize last how much year. we love it oh, and how much so would loved. be available to us yeah, we, we just didn't realise that we love so much stuff. Like, we thought we'd just go and there'd <laughs> be, like, like oh, one or two stalls around. and, like, we'd, like, you know, get some hot chips and watch some, some sheep dogs and, like, thought that that's what it would be. And we were overwhelmed with excitement and by what we saw. And then, as a result, we ended up doing lots of splurging, which was great, but also... Yeah, we couldn't. We didn't. We weren't prepared. Essentially, look, we are older and wiser now. We are, and we're ready. We're market ready. Um, yeah. Tell what's your what are some of the patterns you're. Okay, looking? so as much as I haven't had much time to actually knit around study and life, um, I've still been doing a lot of knit dreaming, um, and there are a few things I want to knit up. So, firstly, as you guys know, I'm knitting that best. Mm -hmm. loving that and at work particularly I'm really like craving that not having the full bulk of arms not having the burden of sleeves and I just really love the vest look recently as well basically I'm hearing you want a warm core I want a warm core um also you know those like cardi gang wool in the gang kind of chunky sweater like pretty simple very simple patterns where you get like a really chunky super chunky yarn mm. i feel like i used to almost look down on those things and i was being a bit snobby about it um i think it was a combination of snobby and if i'm being completely honest i think i was scarred by this as well i think because mm. this single they're all single like plied chunk mm -hmm. um and they peel oh. like nothing else right and i think i was scarred by that and so i always just told myself after this never again i'm not doing that but i've just been seeing so many on instagram of these like really cute colorful chunky vests mm. um and jamie creates who also lives in melbourne who also i've actually like seen shopping at maker maker and stuff as well and she has a lot of cool patterns like that and i just i'm just caving i'm just gonna do it um, and I made this, this decision literally yesterday. So I was looking at some of her patterns and I have decided I definitely want to make um, the happy hour top, which maybe Sarah might be able to put in a picture oh, yeah, of what it looks one. like. Is that the, the one the with wavy, the, the wavy diamonds? Yeah, so like these wavy cool. diamonds. And I want to get a really, not super variegated, but I want like a colourful yarn that has some sort of like fade or something mm. through it um, to make it even more interesting. I don't want just a plain block colour. And I think hand-dyed yarns is like the big thing at these craft 
market. So I want to get some of that. Nice. Um, I also want to make, also by Jamie Creates, the Josephine vest, which has been on my radar for a little bit. It's this um, lace, like mohair vest pattern. It's actually made with like a fingering weight mohair. Um, which I don't actually own either. And again, I think it really lends itself to something that's hand dyed and got a slight variegation yeah. to it. It's kind of like what I'm wearing. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. That's so a I want to get like a hand dyed. I, again, I don't have any hand dyed mohair, hair. So I think that'll add a bit of interest and be nice. Um, and then the last thing I want to make is just, a, just basically a plain, like a more of a plain chunky vest that doesn't have a pattern, as in it doesn't have a stitch textury pattern to it necessarily mm. i don't really know how i'm trying to explain this basically it's not the wavy one i just want one that doesn't have waves on it as well um and an example of that from jamie crates is the one called heard it through the grapevine but there's heaps on ravelry so just something along that yeah along that sort of vein nice there are a few other things as well but i'll maybe give the seat to Sarah to talk about some of the ones that she wants to do with her. Um, the ones that I am going to be shopping for is I want to make, like, I feel like sleepover is flavour of the month. I want to make the Scylla sleepover. Silly, I was, I, in my mind I call it the Silly sleepover, but there's not, I don't know how to pronounce it. It's by Petite Knit. It's the one that has a little bit of textured zigzags with, I think it's with pearls or something. So it's quite, it's got some texture in it, um, but it's just a, it's quite a fitted, I think, sleepover. Yeah. I think it would look quite smart with a shirt for work. Um, so I'm looking for something kind of in the DK weight range, maybe with a bit of fuzz, or maybe I will hold a, a DK with a strand of alpaca, which yes. is something we've both been like toying with but haven't actually done as a nice alternative to not to mohair that's not so super, super fuzzy. Yeah, exactly. I, I think I told you guys, like the person who I combined an order with from Garntopia. Oh. She bought some from Sanders Garn and it was gorgeous. And it's kind of the look that I see online that I really like. That's not a full halo from Mohair, but mm. it's still got, it's got a bit to of, it. A little bit of something. Which is it. good for something that, you know, like something that has like a little bit of definition mm. that you don't want to completely like obscure, obscure with a halo. Um, another sleeper, sleeper <laughs> I mean, I should have just brought this up before, um, is one called the the caution slipover. I actually don't know how to say it. Um, put, a put a picture. It kind of looks like a basket weave pattern. Oh, on the that was slip-over. so cool. It's yeah, very yeah. cool. It's a Rowan pattern or something, wasn't it? Don't no, anyway. it's an ind- it's another independent pattern. But yeah, it's <clears> got like a basket weave look to it, and I want to make it with like a um, like a darker color yarn and a block color. Mm. Um, and then the last thing that I want to purchase yarn for is the Cargill sweater, which Sarah has started knitting up. Yeah, um, and it looks like nice. it's got little like trees on it. So I want to get like a sage or pistachio kind of color and I might actually mismatch My mohair hair to match with it. We'll see. I'll just see how I go Just to create a bit of depth so, so it kind of looks more like trees, but also not. I like that you call, keep calling it the evergreen. I just <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna call it evergreen like that's on my revelry ever, It's gonna be called the evergreen, evergreen sweater. sweater. That's cute. That's cute. Mine's on ice. Mine is pausing at the moment. Did you I, say on ice? Yes. <laughs> Because <laughs> I um, have been busy doing test knits. Oh, that's exciting. That was really fun. Um, the other ones that I am going to... Um, Let might buy some, things just like clothes. I'm just going to open it. I'm so going to buy some... I'm on the lookout for some fun soft yarn for maybe for some Chrissy presents and like birthday presents later in the year. I also have... Okay, so I have some Rowan four-ply tweed yarn, which they don't make anymore, which is a travesty because it was beautiful. It's like a single ply, four and um, four ply tweed yarn, and I just love tweed yarn so much. And, oh, really? I had no idea. And for some reason, at some point in the past, I had bought like ten colors, and they're all little tiny twenty five gram balls, but they are like crying out to be made into color work. Yeah, they're just they're made for color work. Um, can't get them anymore, so I kind of have what I have, and I think it will be enough to do the color work of like a yoke sweater. So I think I would like to make the Birkin, which is quite popular. Um, I've seen quite a few online. My favorite one was by Fiber Tales, made a beautiful Ooh. one. Um, so I just need a base color for that. So I'm gonna be looking for a four ply tweed, probably in like an oatmeal color because, you know, 
That's she likes like. oatmeal. That's what I like. Tweety oatmeal. Um, so a Tweety oatmeal fall fly for the Birkin. I want to make my silly slip over. And then the other one, which I might not buy yarn for, but I'm definitely going to scope out in anticipation of future purchasing, is I want to, I think next, for next winter, because I've still got, we've still got the yarn from the chestnut. The yes, yeah. So yeah. I probably, if I work on that this winter, I probably wouldn't get to a big colour work project again this winter. So I will scope out for next winter something to buy the, to make the cosy kofta by Skane Deer Knits, who is um, uh, a Norwegian designer. She lives in London. She's got her own podcast actually. Up. Um, she's doing this incredible crochet blanket. But she's got this really traditional kofta cardigan thing. It looks so cool. It's like big oversized color work it'll be super thick because it's double like doubly thick and um so i'm going to be looking for some tweedy a ply for that one as well it looks so cool i was eyeing off the photos before we started filming with vera and now i kind of want to make one and i just stopped doing this because it's too much on my list when i keep it's doing it it's a lot that. it's a lot but maybe we could both make it next year yeah a little matching it's project gorgeous. again it's cool we should do that every year and week. we should do it like a different color combo because you want to do the over back do a light one. and i might do a dark, dark background yes. and then we'll be matching but not identical and then we can wear it to the wool and sheep show next year <laughs> um so yes i'm i don't want to buy it yet because i want to shift some of my stash but i don't know this could be like a it's just a reconnaissance mission really. yeah totally and so, wait till you find the perfect yarn for it mm. yeah exactly so there'll be lots there but we'll see what the day brings we'll see what we end up spending all our money on it's not called spend to go for nothing oh uh, yeah look the the stash is pretty full but um <laughs> that's okay i think yeah it brings us a lot of joy and yeah, I'm really, I'm really excited. Next time you see us, it'll probably be post and yeah, yeah. What a world! And I'll be back for my holiday. I know Sarah's off. She's going on this like big trip. My first America. holiday since essentially since before COVID, really. Oh, huge! I'm excited. Can you see the excitement? I'm <laughs> so excited for her to leave me. <laughs> um. Cool. Anything else you want to add? That's everything for me. Oh my gosh, can I just tell you a really fun story? Yeah. This is like, it's, it's a yarn adjacent story, so I think it's <laughs> yeah, kind of acceptable. <laughs> That's like me just talking about baby swaddling for like 10 minutes. <laughs> okay, yeah. Um, so, I have, like, I'm trying to get rid of, I don't want to keep scraps. Yeah. Like, I'm trying to get rid of bits of any balls and stuff that I am trying to... Um, and I just have a heap of them. I've been collecting for a little while and I just took a photo of them and I just put them on D Yarn D Stash Australia or Australian Unitas United or one of those Facebook pages. And I was like, I got some free scraps, who wants them? And then I just walked away from my phone for a while. And then someone messaged me quite soon afterwards and was like, hi, can I buy your stash? Can I, buy, can I pay for postage for your yarn scraps? I was like, sure. And then I subsequently got some messages being like, actually someone else was first and as per the rules of the group, oh, you need to no. offer it to someone else. And I was like, oh, I didn't really look at the group comments because everyone was like, me, 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 me. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. Like, People go get hectic. They got hectic about it. And I was like, I don't care. I just want to get rid of some scraps and I don't want all of this like politics. But then like one of the group administrators. Oh, no. <laughs> contacted me and was like as per the rules of the group oh, no. you have to you are obliged to offer it to this person first i was like i literally just emailed the first person who messaged me but it's not who messages you it's who comments first or something and i was just like you know what no one can have it i just i can't do oh my god <laughs> i was like i can't deal with this stress i love that you just like I was put just your like, foot down i was, I was like, like you don't deserve my scrap no it was just like i don't want to this is not what i signed up for i just wanted to get rid of some yarn and uh yeah. so i was like you know what i'm just so they're still at home i was like i'm gonna do this again one day when i am when you've cooled down <laughs> when i've recovered <laughs> that's from, like, so funny i mean people oh. do get really hectic on those pages like, like on those pages this about is like, like 10 mini 10 grand skeins like it's like this much it's such a small amount of scraps and People were contacting the administrator about, and I was like, fuck out. That's so funny, because I feel like, I mean, that kind of stuff happens a lot. I, I'm on, like, Facebook Marketplace and, like, buy, stop, sell groups a lot, and, like, people do get quite intense about, you know, me, 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 NIL, like, yeah, yeah. whatever, but at the same time, like, it's usually the stakes are a bit higher. 
Yeah, not like <laughs> my leftovers that I'm trying to palm off. It's okay. I'm sure. Anyway, know. it was a learning experience. Yeah, Learned I mean, I, I don't want to get, I don't want to get us cancelled, but at the same time, I kind of just want you to be like to the person who messaged you, just be like, you can have. <laughs> I was like, I probably, she's like, well, next time if you do end up listing them again, please let me know. I'm like, sure. I don't know. I just can't do it. How future. frustrating. Oh, anyway. I'm sorry that that. that. <laughs> I also know your tolerance for this stuff is really low as someone who like does not do like a lot of that buy swap sell stuff. Oh, uh, I was like, this is not the world for me. Um, maybe I'll just drop them off the other shop or something. Have you ever like tried to sell stuff on Marketplace before? Uh, not much. Because I sell a lot on Marketplace and I feel like it would do your head in. Like the number of people who just message you saying, hey, is this available? Like will drive you insane. Uh, it's, yeah, no. <laughs> anyway. It's my nightmare. It's my absolute nightmare. Anyway, that was a fun experience. Um, yeah, I don't know if that's relevant. It just, I just, I just <laughs> like, on that note. <laughs> anyway, um, thank you everyone for watching. Thank you for all the lovely comments and things we got on the last video. Yeah. It's, um, it's so nice to sort of see people like commenting and, um, like commenting like on multiple, be like, oh, hey again. Maybe, yeah, it's nice. It's super fun. We read them all and we get super chuffed whenever you guys interact. So thank you. I feel like you say chuffed every week. I know, but I actually am. Like, there's no better word than chuffed. You are chuffed. I am chuffed. It's yeah. uh, very, like, it's a chuffing experience. I guess it feels good. It's good. Um, but yes, thank you for watching and we'll see you soon. Maybe with like a little Bendigo feed. And a Sarah Tan. Bye. <laughs> <For only. laughs> Bye. What's that, Paige? <laughs> this is like the five on the final sleeve of a jumper. That's a colour work <gasps> jumper. Paige, what is and this? then I decided I hated it. And so, but I don't want to unwind it because unwinding colour work sounds like a nightmare and it's so ugly. Oh my god, you've done so much but though. It's such nice. It's like Oka and Ren and Ollie and like, <laughs> I know. I know. I know, but look how ugly it is. Also, I didn't understand how to make it not bunch. Like, mm. I haven't learned those techniques yet. So, it's a bit of a disaster. Look, we live but and learn. We live and learn. I'm